Well, I think on the one hand, you have the Steel Museum, which was always there in, in a certain way. It was uh, founded in 1815. It came to this side of the, the city in, in the 1870s. Uh, but was, what has developed in the last uh, decades, basically uh, Frankfurt tried to not reinvent itself, but kind of made a, uh, a strong move into being also a cultural uh, hub. And uh, what they've created was the Museum Riverfront. Uh, so basically plugging next to the Steel Museum uh, a lot of other institutions. So what you see right now is this kind of enfilade of museums along the riverside is basically really an invention of the 1980s. And the Schirn Kunsthalle, the other institution that I'm also running, is also a child of that uh, momentum. Uh, the Schirn Kunsthalle basically was one of the last major um, in cultural institution buildings that they've done in the late 1980s and right now I mean it's located right in the city center next to the Römer um, where the city government sits and the Liebig House is again also an institution on the riverfront. It's basically an old villa that was done in the 1870s and at, at the beginning of the 20th century was turned into a sculpture collection. Well, the Steel is the oldest and most important private cultural foundation in Germany. So basically it stems from the last will of one single person, Johann Friedrich Steel, who gave his whole fortune and his whole collection to the public in a way, to, uh, with the will and the, his last wish that a museum should, and a school should be done out of that. Obviously Johann Friedrich Steel was basically a, a, a person, a human, uh, coming out of the Enlightenment. So his, the, this whole idea about kind of uh, doing an institution to the benefit of all people and uh, through that art education actually makes a better a person out of you. So that, I guess, was his, uh, his intention. And he, right, very rightly so, wanted a museum and a school that should uh, stem out of that. And already in his first intention was that this museum becomes something bigger, grander, bigger than himself, so to say, or his, his own collection. So he kind of gave that almost like an order to the, to the next generations of people in Frankfurt. He said, okay, make something bigger out of this. This museum has always had this kind of broad span of, uh, of collection, collecting from the, what, the, what, what is being considered the beginning of painting in, in late medieval times to now. At the Stedel, uh, our core expertise is basically really large scale, very important old master exhibitions. It's in a certain way a classical museum, so we are mainly focused on painting, sculpture and works on paper. We don't really collect in, in the area of co uh, contemporary large-scale installations, etc. But it's kind of like an enfilade of masterpieces. So you really have under one roof, I would say, um, the story of 700 years of art history. It's a very civic institution and I think that's something that uh, really stands out in the whole German museum scene. Uh, we, uh, the Stiel is certainly the anomaly to the museum infrastructure in Germany, also because it is really almost entirely uh, privately funded. The way we operate is basically we operate uh, through the support, uh, through the philanthropic support of a lot of the citizens of Frankfurt, as well as through corporate source support, through sponsorship and also through earned income. One of our main tasks was basically to really enrich our contemporary collection. I felt that we should do this in a very strategic way and rather not go step by step, but really try to make a, a big jump, a big leap forward. And that uh, basically uh, entailed uh, building a major expansion, a new contemporary wing, if you might call it that way, um, but also um, bringing in over a thousand selected works of art to enrich our contemporary collection. And we tapped, uh, for, for that purpose, we tapped into, the, uh, into different communities, so to say. And one uh, very interesting community for me was actually the corporate world and the corporate collections that are here in Frankfurt. If you talk about corporate collections now, the, the interesting thing is this, that uh, they all come from this idea of creating um, a better workplace. I felt that one possibility, one next step for a corporate collection is that some of these works actually are being brought to a museum. I think one of the tasks of a director is not so much only to, um, to listen uh, to the motifs, uh, but actually sometimes to trigger the motifs. The Schirn is a, is a different kind of institution. It's a municipal institution. It was 
uh, it was the will of the city to have one of the main exhibition halls, a Kunsthalle in, in Frankfurt. And it's uh, right now I would say that the Schön Kunsthalle is really one of the main exhibition venues in Europe that does uh, not only contemporary but also uh, 19th century and modern art. So there are only very few left uh, because it gets more and more challenging for a Kunsthalle that doesn't have its own collection to, to, to trade or to, or to barter uh, to do major shows on 19th century and modern art, but the, uh, the Schirn still is able to achieve that. The, the Schirn basically does, um, I would say, more challenging shows. I mean, I would describe the program of the Schirn different to the Stiel, I would say that uh, the Stiel shows are usually manifestations, manifestations also of scholarship, manifestations of how the institution has research something and uh, how it kind of develops out of its own collection a certain perspective. Uh, at the Schirn, we, uh, our shows are more like suggestions, how you could see something in a different way. So they are, they are, the shows are very surprising and they, they are challenging in, uh, in a different way. The Liebig House uh, is a very special uh, place. It looks like an enchanted villa <laughs> from the 19th century and it is one of the, I would say, best sculpture collections in the world. The collection ranges from old Egypt to uh, classicism. So it was really done in the spirit of Winkelmann. Uh, so it kind of, give, uh, but it's solely sculpture and its strengths are especially on the area of uh, Roman antiquity and medieval sculpture and Renaissance uh, sculpture. I, I find it a, a really wonderful place, a wonderful place to visit. And uh, it's something that uh, really gives you a, the possibility of being immersed and involved with sculpture in a, in a very pristine way. And the, so the way that uh, we run it and the way our, also we, how we program it, we don't want to make it actually a very popular institution. Uh, so it's very different to, to the Stiel and the Schirn Kunsthalle. Its attendance hovers around 100,000 a year and we, we don't want to actually change that because I think it's a very intimate and a very personal experience going there. It's a municipal institution in a way that the collection and the building is being owned by the city. We, we, we right now make developments with the museum that bring us together, or that connect us with various other fields. We run our museum shop online. So we, uh, we have our own site with DM, Drogeriemärkte, where, where people can order online reproductions of our uh, artwork. So we, we venture into the, these different fields. And I think for me, the most diff interesting venture right now is really this, this whole uh, notion of the cultural educational field that we kind of really tap into to with, with, with very interesting digital means. We've developed uh, educational gaming uh, for children. We will publish an, a major art online education course. We run our own film series. We, we actually produce film documentaries for, for TV stations. Um, uh, we do many, many different uh, things in that, that field that actually means, makes the museum or the cultural institution a provider of information, a provider of education. Uh, a provider of content and something that is, can be used or can be experienced also way beyond uh, the, uh, just visiting the, the museum. If you take all three institutions, the Liebighaus, the Schirn and the Steel, we do about more than 20 major shows a year. That's a massive amount of programming. If you would ask anyone within Frankfurt or outside of Frankfurt, they would certainly attest that the development has been tremendous.